Alright everyone, hello and welcome to another HRL recap. This one's going to be on Firestone Firehawk Week 1. So, of course, Firestone Firehawk, we're doing a bit of a mix this season. It's going to be um, the classic Halo 4 cheesy GPs with um, some H2A hog action as well that'll have a bit of a variety um, for those races. And it goes back and forth too. So this first week we did the Halo 4 stuff. Next week we'll be right away switching it up to h2a um so that should be pretty interesting switching back and forth constantly um but yeah so a quad to open up the season and a quad to end the season so of course um on the first night we have four motos at everglades and let's go through how they went so first moto uh detail and luke the really strong start but um a few rough laps in the beginning slaunch got close they got really close all three of them did slaunch takes the lead has really good pace, runs away with it, Detail gets back to second, Luke finishes third, Fireball fourth, and Turkey fifth. Then the second moto, um, Slaunch gets to the lead very quickly, like really good really good start, gets to the lead within the first like three laps, I want to say, um, and then kind of runs away with it from there. Roman has a pretty good start as well, but obviously not as good of a start. Still has a strong race, finishes second, good rebound from the first moto for him. And then Detail and Luke, um, with a combination of speed and also some fortune, uh, Fireball, uh, having some some lag issues late in the race in Moto2, unfortunate. So he he falls back to fifth. Had had a chance at a podium, but yeah, the lag issues did not help him in defending either of those positions. Um, so then Detail gets podium spot, Luke gets fourth. And then Moto3, um, Moto3, kind of a cheesy start, but everybody was like rubber banding a bit almost. Um, not like literally lagging, but like on the track, like making mistakes and stuff like that. So it seemed like Slaunch wasn't going to have as strong of a start, and then in the same amount of time as Moto2, pretty much, he ended up having as strong of a start and uh, got to the lead around the same time, I want to say. Didn't look like it was going to be like that, but it, it ended up that way. Um, and then Roman took advantage of some mistakes from Luke, got to second very quickly. Um, and then Detail, Luke, and Fireball uh, ended up having a really good battle for that last podium spot again, but it ends in the same order again. Detail taking third, Luke fourth, Fireball fifth. And then Moto4 uh was quite the cheesy one so roman going very aggressive on the start and gets to the lead very 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 fast gets to the lead uh, by the, like second lap maybe third lap at the latest but he got to the lead very quickly in this race and then ran away with it takes um the moto win here luke was not able to get to the lead as fast as roman but uh was able to get to second a bit faster than you know other drivers were able to make it up through the pack it wasn't a crazy good start but it was just very cheesy like this moto definitely had the most um spice and the most action of the four i would say i would say this final one definitely did um and yeah there's a lot of like twists and turns that kind of shook up this race a bit um but yeah so roman and luke ended up getting to the front um faster than anyone else roman taking first uh luke second and then slaunch battled his way back for a uh, podium and this podium was actually really good obviously it's unfortunate couldn't uh, take the sweep but uh, the podium was very good because him and Detail actually got involved in a really big flip um, on the downhill. I wanna, it might have been at the end of lap one. End of lap one or lap two is very early on in the race. Um, but yeah, super early on, they both flipped out, and it was really bad. Like, they literally fell back to the last two spots with only, like, you know, maybe ten laps to go. And they battled their way back all the way to fighting for the podium spot to the very end. But the driver that held on to the podium spot at the end was slaunch um and fireball made a really good last lap move i want to say to pick up two spots gets fourth and detail was able to hold on to the top five had a shot at the podium unfortunately wasn't able to take it but still um taking a top five and we take a look at the overall points on the night of course slaunch has the highest total as you'd imagine um taking the overall at everglades 65 points very strong roman not the greatest first moto but rebounded really well and took second with 58 luke and detail tied with 55, Fireball, solid night as well, 50, um, Opix with 42, Turkey with 41, Vulcan 37, Soul 33, and uh, Q28. So our results will go into the points, and obviously, you know, obviously the points reflect what we just saw, because it's only one race in. Um, but you can see the stats a little bit. So yeah, of course, Slaunch, only driver to podium in every race. Um, very impressive feat in the first night. Uh, Roman got three podiums, but he did finish off the top five once. Um, Detail Luke, and, oh, sorry, Fireball, I didn't green this. There we go, fix that right now. Um, but yeah, Slaunch, Detail, Luke, and Fireball were the only drivers that finished in 
the top five every race. Slanch was the only driver that um, podiumed every race. Had the best uh, plus minus, so like hard charger on the night as well, which isn't really a surprise. Um, but yeah, three podiums for, for Roman, three podiums for Detail, a couple podiums for Luke, and yep, Fireball, not able to finish on the podium. Um, had some opportunities, but wasn't able to do it, but he did finish in the top five every race. And Turkey, um, picking up a top five there as well. That one podium, that, or that, sorry, that one top five that Roman didn't get was the one that Turkey got, and that was in the first moto. Um, but yeah, there you go. So it's looking like, I mean, I think this top five could be pretty competitive, honestly. Um, and then these guys are going to be pretty close with each other as well. Apex, Turkey, Vulcan, and Soul um, back and forth. He's got some work to do. Got to get used to the game. Got to get used to Halo Racing. It takes some time, but I'm sure he'll be able to make some things happen when he gets used to it. Honestly, ran pretty well in the start of most of the races, but then like one mistake would happen and kind of like open up the floodgates, which I feel like is how it is for a lot of people. Um, when they're getting used to it again, like you make the one mistake kind of opens everything up. Uh, but yeah, like pretty good starts to the races, honestly. Like he was holding on to the lead after lap one, and these are long laps, so that's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, just got to get back in the swing of things. Um, but yeah, of course, like Slaunch going to have a really nice points lead, and I'm sure he's very happy with that because um, the Hogs, you know, the Hogs are like the wild card, I would say, of this season, and that's what we're going into next week so i'm sure he's very happy at having a solid points lead going into the first hog night um so we don't really have to look at any of this stuff um i could show this one briefly in case you want to see like the podiums and finish and stuff like visualized oh um so luke ends up taking the the third place overall in the race well this I'm just, I'm just mentioning this because it's kind of funny but detail ends up having top three overall in the points which is a funny um like, it's funny how this works out. So, like, the tiebreaker for the for the overall and the tiebreaker for, like, the point standings are different. So, Luke gets benefited by, like, the race results tiebreaker to take the top three overall in the night. But Detail gets benefited by, like, the points tiebreaker to have, like, technical top three in the points after night one. Which is just kind of, like, a funny, like, weird uh, instance with the way the tiebreakers work versus uh like in a race versus in the points that you know after night one we could have a driver finish third technically in the race but be fourth technically in the points um and then obviously flip-flop that for detail so um but yeah that's just i mean obviously it's one weekend tie whatever um doesn't really matter at this point but i just thought that was kind of funny that that uh that that works out that way um let me go to the teams. So, yeah, we got the teams decided, and I do have, I'll show uh, the reach. I don't think I showed them in the reach throwback uh, recap. If I did, my bad. I'm going to show them again, but I have those figured out as well. So I'll show those here in a second. We did figure out the teams, did the team draft, just uh, experimenting um, with a different team format in Firestone Firehawk here, which I think this is a good season to do it anyways because the old Firestone Firehawk, like, kind of had, a, it basically had two teams anyways. Like, there's... You know, there's technically some other ones, but there's basically, like, two big teams, so it's kind of like that anyways. So, Slaunch, Team Captain of Rockstar Energy, Roman, Team Captain of Superfly. Rockstar Energy is uh, Slaunch, Luke, Turkey, Fireball, and Vulcan. And Superfly is Roman, Detail, Soul, Opix, and Q. All right, so those are the two teams. Rockstar's got the edge uh, in Night 1, of course, which you could imagine. You know, Slaunch winning three motos, Team Captain obviously helps that out quite a bit. Um, so they have the edge in uh, night one. We'll see if Superfly can bounce back in night two. And also, I don't know exactly how we're doing the team points for either series yet. I could see us doing something different there. Um, so this is just like the pure, like all the, you know, moto results added in team points. Like it's just the pure points. I don't know if that's actually how we're going to do the team championship. So stay tuned on that. Um, that's just how I have it for now. Just to look good basically just just see just so you can see the teams essentially um but yeah that's how it looks right now oh and uh before i show the schedule and close out this recap there it is um because again i think i didn't i don't think they were decided at the time um but they are now so here's the we don't have the team names and stuff like that and like colors and whatever all that figured out but we do have the teams themselves and here they are um, so Soul was captain in one team, and his team is Soul, Luke, Roman, and Hunter. It's our team number one here. Um, Turkey's team is, you know, he's team captain for the second one. It's Turkey, Slaunch, Uncle Blake, and Vulcan. And then Opix team captain for the third one. Opix's team is himself, Detail, Nuked, and Q. Um, so again, depends on how we do the team format. But for three teams, I actually think these are pretty well balanced, honestly. I don't think these are too bad at all. 
Um, so depending on how we do the format, you know, team team points could be pretty interesting in both series. I think we'll have to see uh, how it plays out. Um, but yeah, teams have been kind of an afterthought this year. So, you know, cool to bring them back a little bit um, in these series and, uh, yeah, give them a bit more of a purpose, I guess. It's, it's kind of nice to think about again. So anyways, closing it out. Um, yeah, but as you can see, the team points have it on here as well. So that's cool. Again, you know, having it be a little more important. Um, I hope you guys like the... Oh, I was going to ask for, like, the team captains in particular. I hope you guys like... Um, the fonts that I chose out. I I specifically like the Rockstar one because I couldn't. I well, I hope I hope it's good because I couldn't find the actual Rockstar font, but this kind of looks similar. Like if you look at it with like the lines going through the letters and stuff, it's like kind of close. It's like the closest thing I could find. But for either or, if you guys want me to switch any of that stuff, like for the team captains, if you want me to switch any of the fonts or whatever. Oh, and then um on the team page, like the colors for the drivers for Rockstar as well are like uh based off of like different drinks in the lineup as well so that's kind of cool um they all are uh based off different ones so but yeah if you want me to change anything uh message for the team captains if you're watching this video if you want to change anything just let me know um could always could always do that don't really mind um adjusting any of that stuff but yeah of course you could see the podiums and you know of course launch taking the overall starting off the season hot rockstar on front um but now we go to claystone compound that's what's up next week and again we're switching H2A, Hogs, going to be so different than what we just raced. And Everglades is, like, probably one of the more chill tracks, I would say, um, in the schedule. Well, now it dial we dial it all the way up to 10. Like, if a chill track, this next track is not very chill. This next track is, I would say, probably the hardest um, and most punishing Hog track in the schedule. Um, it's not as punishing, maybe, as it was when we raced it in DSS, but it's still pretty rough. Um... And yeah, I, I like that we're going right into it. So Claystone Compound, it'll be interesting to watch this race play out. Um, we're going to find out, like, where does everybody... We kind of got a, you know, a look at how people are looking in the Gooses on Halo 4. Well, how do people look in the Hogs on H2A? I have no idea. This is going to be a total mix-up. I think things will look very different. Um, and yeah, we'll have to see how everybody does. And again, it's such a difficult track that opens up, you know, room for mistakes and stuff like that, too. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think we're going to see... Uh, some more spice. I think we're going to see some more spice um, in next week of Firestone Firehawk. Kind of like what we saw in the fourth moto at Everglades, where it was just total cheese and like kind of the floodgates opened. Like it kind of felt like the night was building up to it a little bit. Um, I think we'll I think we'll have a continuation of that uh, at Claystone. I think we're going to have lots of crashes in the Hogs. It's a very difficult track. Um, I think we're going to have a new winner, at least a new winner for sure, maybe two. Um, but at least one, because the hogs, again, are just so unpredictable, and we've only done so many races on them, so I would, wouldn't be surprised if we see a new winner. Um, and, you know, maybe some shakeups in the point standings as well. I think, I think next week we'll already shake things up quite a bit. Um, but again, going back and forth. So we'll go to this, and then we're back to Halo 4, going back and forth all the way. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the recap. I know this one was a little bit longer, but I wanted to go over, like, the team points and all that stuff, and those additions and stuff like that. The Reach one, I didn't have any of that stuff done, so I didn't have I didn't have as much to talk about in the Reach one, whereas this one, adding that in, had a little more to talk about. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it, and week two of Reach and Firestone should be pretty hype, so see you guys there.